Hey, so let's talk about lines, shall we? That most rudimentary of elements. Uh, for many of us, it was the introduction to the world of art. We pick up a crayon, given a sheet of paper, and we go to town, right? Making lines, lots of them. Scribble, scribble. So, um, and oftentimes, like, our, our initiation into uh, how difficult art can be, like trying to color within the lines, uh, for some of us that's still problematic. Uh, we don't want to, or, or for some of us we have to, <laughs> those lines, uh, defining edges. Okay, boundaries, right? So, um, what is a line? Well, um, one definition would be the path that a point takes as it travels through space. Um, and for some of you, that's um, maybe a little too clinical. But I, I kind of like that definition because it has within it the suggestion of movement, right? Um, a path that a point takes as it travels through space, right? So space is involved, movement, uh, that delineation between this side and that side. Um, it's, you know, lines are uh, such a, a, a critical component to what we do. And oftentimes we overlook them like, ah, oh, we just take them from granted. They're so prolific. There's so many lines uh, that have been made by artists over the years. Uh, so easy to make, right? Uh, so I think it's easy to overlook the importance of line. Uh, so let's investigate, shall we? So lines, and like always, we try to analyze what's going on so we can better understand uh, the elements and principles and uh, examine what we do um, and improve, right? And so that's, we have to start uh, by kind of breaking things down. So the physical characteristics of line, you need to think about this every once in a while. Uh, a line has a measure. Um, there are different types of line, different directions that lines can take. They can be located in different parts of the picture plane. And uh, ultimately, they have a certain character. Uh, and that's the fun part. So um, the measure of a line, length and width, right? Um, if uh, a line is very short or very long, it makes a difference. If a line is very wide or very narrow, that makes a difference. And again, you know, we don't think about it enough. Our options, right? As you're making your work, you need to think about length and width, the measure of a line. Types of lines, straight, angular, curved. Again, it's so simple. Um, and yet we don't think about our options enough when we're making lines. Oftentimes we just put things on automatic pilot. Again, going back to the very beginnings of our introduction to art and line, how important it was, I think oftentimes, again, we don't think about it enough. So the type of line, critical. The direction, horizontal, vertical, diagonal. Each one of these things implies certain um, ideas to the viewer. Um, you know, something that's horizontal has a very different impression than something that's vertical. And we all know how important diagonals are to creating motion. If you've got a static image and you want to create a sense of motion, um, you better start using diagonals, right? Okay, so the direction of a line, critical. The location of a line. Um, if I've got squiggly lines at the top, what does that look like to you? They look like birds to me. Uh, if I have squiggly lines at the bottom of the picture plane, uh, that may suggest 
waves. I had a student once uh, suggest that they look like fish lips. <laughs> so uh, the placement of a line matters um, to the way we interpret it. Right? Um, lines divide space. Right. If I took a diagonal line and divided it roughly at a third, like the top third of my picture plane, uh, it has a certain um, uh, effect on the way that I perceive that space. Um, if I were to take a line and divide a canvas right down the middle, that can be kind of problematic, right? Um, you know, it's almost too even. Although this is, you know, in a sense, when we see symmetrical work, there is an implied vertical line going right down the center, right? Um, okay. Um, the character of a line. This has to do with the tool that you're using and the medium and the surface on which you're making that mark. There are so many variables. And I encourage you to uh, try to investigate line, make um, as many lines as you can with different materials, different tools. Don't be satisfied with a good old, you know, pencil, paintbrush, you know, like try to branch out, um, you know, see if you can find new ways of making lines. Um, be inventive. Don't rely just on what you've always done in the past. Find new ways to create these lines because if you use different tools, different materials, you're going to get different character um, for each one of those. Um, and again, like the more you investigate materials, the better um, you're going to become at your craft. So important that you explore and investigate. Okay, so the character of a line is so critical, right? The personality that you uh, impart to your work, um, you know, very important. Like, and think about the, the motion of your body as you're making a line, so important, right? Those lines are a record of you as a person and your movement. Uh, think about Jackson Pollock's work. Man, he left a record of his body on those canvases. We can't see him but we understand his sense of motion through all those lines that he created, those splattered lines. Okay. Types of line. There are actual lines, plenty of actual lines, and then there are implied lines. Um, suggestion of line, right? Uh, uh, gestalt um, lines, uh, psychological lines. More about those in a minute. So let's take a look at some actual lines. Calligraphic lines are those that uh, kind of change uh, weight along their length, right? So uh, calligraphy is derived from the Greek, meaning beautiful writing. And so as an artist, uh, you can employ certain tools that, uh, you know, make a certain line thin at one end and then thicker in the middle, and then they taper off again at the other end. Uh, they tend to create this kind of flow, a uh, sense of movement. Every line basically creates a sense of motion, but there's a certain elegance to calligraphic lines, how they there's this variety uh, within a simple single line, okay? And it gives work a certain character, right? If we look at Chinese brush painting, um, um, you know, uh, brush and ink, uh, it has a certain uh, beauty to it, right? And it's the change of the shape of the brush as the stroke is made that gives it that quality. Um, here is uh, a simple pen and ink drawing that uh, each one of those lines kind of varies in weight along its length, uh, gives it a certain quality, a sense of flowing motion. Uh, so think about using more calligraphic lines. Contour, right? And again, this is kind of very rudimentary. This is how we learn to draw, is drawing contours, right? Um, a contour is a line that defines the outer edges of an object, uh, as well as certain essential inner structures. 
Contour lines often define and separate shapes within a design, right? The way we differentiate is the edges of those shapes, and contour lines define those edges. All right, so here's a Picasso uh, portrait of Stravinsky. Uh, contour outlines of the figure that define its place in the composition. Um, again, those lines um, delineate uh, space, right? Um, again, very rudimentary way of drawing. This is kind of how we learn. We outline shapes using lines. Um, here's another contour drawing, uh, quieter, um, a little more soul in the quality of those lines, right? The character of those lines, but all uh, still kind of defining edges, the contours of the figure. Here's a Degas. Again, uh, expressive use of, of contour lines that define the edges of things. And <clears throat> very uh, important skill to have, right? To be able to create those contour lines to define um, your work. Now, cross contour uh, is a little different. It, it will run across a shape to suggest volume, right? Uh, three-dimensional quality. Um, and so typically that's done with a network of lines, like hatching lines, that describe the volume of a shape. Uh, so, uh, like here's uh, a vector donut, right? All those lines kind of um, uh, work together to suggest um, a volume of space, right? It's contained in a certain way. Um, and it's a network of cross contour lines that define it and, and explain that space to us. Um, here's a beautiful etching by Charles White um, using a network of hatched lines to suggest volume um, and value. More about that later. And, and here's a, a vector engraving, right? And this is, it's kind of hard to see out here. Let me zoom in. Like these are all made with a computer, like vector lines that describe the volume of this figure, right? Pretty cool. Cross contour. Okay, so gesture lines. Um, quickly drawn, uh, they suggest action and energy and animation, right? Um, this Daumier uh, um, piece is, you know, I can't think of anything more boring than uh, two old guys reading, you know, but the way that he draws it is so exciting, right? That gesture, again, it's a record of the motion of his body, uh, and that imbues even uh, a less than thrilling subject with energy and excitement, right? Again, motion is so important. Line is a great way to create motion. It is the most expedient way to create motion, and gesture lines, um, doubly so. All right? Um, here, like, it may be hard kind of to tell what's going on here, but um, this is basically a couple of figures fighting. Um, and again, the energy of the use of line in this piece really um, excites the eye and keeps it moving and happy. Hatching and cross hatching, um, like these are um, a network of lines that kind of repeating lines that vary in density to create a sense of value um, and, and, and depth, right? Value is a great way to create a sense of depth. Um, and so, you know what hatching is, right? If you go one direction, it's hatching. If you go back the other way, that's cross hatching. Um, and again, it's a way to create value and, and a sense of, of motion as well. Uh, so here's um, a beautiful 
uh, hatched uh, drawing that uh, really suggests that the difference between uh, highlight and shadow, uh, defining space and creating energy. Again, he, these are cross contour hatch marks that suggest volume as well as value. Okay. Now, stippling, uh, very similar to hatching. Uh, this is where you use dots, right, which are essentially defined as very short lines. Uh, and, and again, in a network, we can vary the density of those dots to create a sense of highlight and shadow. Uh, right? The more densely packed those dots are, the darker the value will be. Uh, so here's stippling in action, right? And even the even these stippled lines suggest volume, that, right? Uh, there, it's almost like an implied line that uh, goes across the contour to define um, the the volume of these shapes that make up this figure. Okay, so here it gets more interesting. Implied lines, right? Ones that aren't complete, but how, like, we complete them in our mind, right? Because uh, we, we can't stand it when things are incomplete. Um, but by the same token, we like it when we're confronted with a puzzle where we do have to interact to complete things, right? So it's an interesting dynamic. All right, so certain lines have, have a sense of continuity, right? Like, so this is, you know, uh, in the implication of lines moving in a certain direction. Like, we, we interpret these two lines um uh by their sense of continuity more so than their color right it it's almost like our our desire to have that line continue along that path uh is more important than our than seeing it in terms of color right so i see a straight line and i see a curved line intersecting through it i almost i almost ignore the color um my first instinct is to, to continue that line along its path. Okay, so you know if we look at broken lines, uh, we get the implication of more complete things, right? It's a very simple kind of broken line sketch that suggests an apple. Um, here, uh, the Gestalt principle of closure is at work, right? Um, the tendency to perceive an incomplete or broken object as whole, right? It's, you know, Gestalt is about the relationship between parts and wholes and our, our ability as humans to perceive the completed version, even though we're just presented with broken, <laughs> incomplete information. So we see the cube, even though those lines that make up the cube are broken and only kind of defined where they intersect those black circles, right? We can still see it as a whole um, object. Those lines, uh, we complete them in our mind's eye. Uh, and, and we like it. When you give your viewer something incomplete, they often see it uh, as more interesting, right? So think about that. Here's a Picasso portrait where the lines are, are incomplete. Like we don't really uh, we, the information is not a hundred percent and yet we still perceive it as a single figure or maybe it's two like light and shadow. It, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's unclear, it's incomplete, but we still complete it in our mind's eye, right? Uh, and so more abstract work oftentimes has more implied elements more in, in more implied lines. Okay, uh, line of sight, right? Here's just the implication of a line. When we have figures in a work of art looking in a certain direction towards a certain element, it, um, it draws our attention and we follow their line of sight wherever they're looking, right? If you walk into a room and I'm, I'm in that room and I'm looking up at the ceiling, you walk in, you see me looking up, where is your... <laughs> attention going to go? You know, like, what's going on up there, right? Uh, psychology of where people look 
activates that area of a design. So be very conscious of where your figures are looking when you uh, are uh, designing your compositions. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right. So you guys identify. Right. What I'd like you to do is like. Uh, here's a whole list of different kinds of lines. I want you to identify them when I show you this work of art. Maybe pause the video and, and go through the list and think about which one of these applies to the lines that I see in this work of art. Okay. So, what do we see here? I see diagonals. And verticals, right? Strong verticals, strong diagonals. Um, you could even look at the ground and the way the brushwork goes and think, oh, well, he's kind of doing a, a cross contour definition of that space uh, by running it down through those diagonals, right? Repeating a network of lines, of brushwork. Okay, so again, that, that diagonal of the ground are, creates a great sense of motion through this thing. Okay, so what's going on here? Pause it and, and think about it. Think about all the line uh, types of line that apply to this piece. Again, we see lots of verticals, lots of diagonals, uh, we also see um, gesture, right? Those quick strokes that create a more gestural uh, def you know, definition of these um, shapes and objects. Can you find more? Keep thinking about it. Keep looking. How about this one? Curvilinear, right? Um, this is an egg temper piece, and Botticelli, um, like one of the hallmarks of egg temper is you can make really precise line with it. And so all those uh, curvilinear lines running through her hair, very important. Creates a certain mood, right? Bridget Riley, what's going on here? Pause it and think about all the things that apply, all right? They're calligraphic, right? They change width along uh, the length of the lines. Uh, they're following contours, right? Um, there's, uh, it's uh, cross contour, even more so, right? Uh, and there are implied lines here, right? Do you see uh, the way, like uh, each one of these kind of undulating waves across the, the, the top of those waves is an implied line. And then we, you know, uh, we've got vertical and diagonal uh, working as well. How about this one? I love this piece. Goya. Where are you looking? Look at the lines that make up the focal point. That figure. His arms and legs form lines. Right? X marks the spot. Uh, and then the line of sight from the soldiers and their guns leading us to that focal point. Line is such a critical part of this piece. Okay. How about this one? Lots of gesture, like lots of scribbles, lots of action and animation, drips. Uh, the character of the line is so critical here, right? That's what uh, really interests the eyes, like that sense of motion uh, and energy and character. And 
finally here, like all these strong verticals running through this piece. Um, like really pulling our eye, up, you know, we follow those lines up and down along these lines. Um, and the, the network of verticals running through it creates a certain rhythm, right? Okay, so there you have it. Line, um, oftentimes the overlooked um, uh, element uh, because we're so used to them. But again, I cannot um, um, emphasize this enough. It, that sense of motion that you want to put into your work so dependent on line and your ability to um, manipulate it uh, to create the effect that you want. So um, explore line, um, especially the character of line, and and line as a compositional tool to move the eye from one part of the composition to another. So critical, so uh, incredibly important. So, all right, uh, get those tools out, those mark making tools, and uh, make some uh, incredible lines. All right, okay, take care. I'll talk to you soon.